Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide on Portugal for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. Now Portugal is a nation in Western Europe located in the Iberian Peninsula next to Castile. As you know, Portugal is one of the recommended nations for beginners and as such you probably have played as Portugal. But with EU4 Leviathan dropping there could be a shift in the colonial meta and there could be a new way to play Portugal. So let's take a look at that. Now first as you know Portugal does start off in a regency with Pedro and you will have to wait 3 years before your heir Alfonso is of age. So in the first 3 years there will be no declaring of wars. The first thing we're gonna do is set our rivals, and usually they will be the three Maghrebi nations which have already rivaled us, such as Morocco, Tunis, and Tlemcen. Next, we're gonna dissolve our alliance with England because they're gonna call us into useless conflicts that we don't wanna be a part of. And we're gonna Royal Mary Castile and improve relations with the Pope. After that, we're gonna select three light ships and on those three light ships we're gonna attach our explorer Diogo and we're gonna send him on a mission to explore the West African coast every time he comes back send him to explore again after that we're gonna go into our states and summon the diet choose the best agenda for you sometimes there will be an agenda that gives you claims on areas in Morocco I don't have it right now, but if you do have it, take it. And then we're gonna seize land. We're gonna give the clergy clerical advisory council and church sanctuaries. We're gonna give the nobility increased levies, aristocratic counselors, and we're gonna give the burghers patronage of the arts twice, commercial advisory board, and private trade fleets. After this, we're gonna take one loan, reduce our army maintenance almost down to zero, and on the remaining two light ships, we're gonna recruit three more. So we want to be at our naval force limit, which is 22. And we're going to attach our general that we already have to our main army and recruit one more infantry regiment. We're also going to hire one advisor who is going to be an admin advisor. We're going to take this scripted half priced level two guy. This one is always available. As you can see, he is half price. So we're going to take him. And we're also going to hire a military advisor. If you have a morale or discipline guy, hire him. I don't have one. So I'm going to take this reinforce speed guy. Now we're gonna wait for our boats to finish. Once a month has passed and you have allied Castile, usually if you royal marry them, they will send you an alliance offer. We're gonna send one diplomat to curry favors with Castile and with the other, we are going to embargo all three of our rivals. And once you have embargoed all three of your rivals, we're gonna set our third diplomat to improve relations with Castile. I'm gonna set him as soon as he's available and there we go. Now you've done everything you need to do to set up the start and we just need to wait for our heir to come of age which is gonna be in three years and our ships to finish building so we can unlock the mission competitive advantage which will give us diplo power, navy tradition and a claim on Tangier. In the meantime keep sending your explorer to explore wherever it is available. Once your light ships have finished building, we're gonna take those five light ships and send them to protect trade in Sevilla while the other three are still exploring and the three heavies and 11 transports are in your port. You will also unlock the competitive advantage mission and you should take it immediately. Now we have a claim on Tangier and the only thing we need to wait for is for our heir to come of age. As you can see it's June 1446 and you will get the pop-up regency for Alfonso ends January 15th 1447 so we have about 6 months. So what we are going to do right now is take another loan and hire the free company in Ceuta and we're gonna move our main army to Ceuta as well and raise army maintenance to the max and we'll also move all our ships into the Straits of Gibraltar. Now at this point you should hire another general for your free company in addition to your first guy but my first general died so I'm just gonna hire him for my main army but you should have two generals at this point. Now we're just gonna wait final five months for our regency to end. Make sure to set your ships to allow friendly fleets to attach. So now it's October 1st 1447 and of course you will have your king become ruler by this time and you should have 10 favors with Castile if you've been improving relations and currying favors with them. So it's time to declare on Morocco but first we're gonna ally the Pope and then we're gonna declare a conquest for Tangiers against Morocco and we are going to call in Castile. Morocco usually only ally Granada or sometimes no one 
and their subjects become disloyal. In my case, his subjects are loyal, but it doesn't matter. You can still beat Morocco and Granada with the help of Castile. So we're going to move all our troops into Tangier. Once our troops are there, we are going to naval barrage the fort in Tangier. After we've taken Tangier, it's time to move once again all your troops into Fez. Now we're moving all our troops together, even though we're suffering attrition. This is to prevent Morocco from engaging one of our armies. Let Castile take care of Granada while you take care of Morocco. Eventually, the Castilian armies will move into here. If you see that Morocco's army is far away, you can take your free company to siege down some of these provinces over here while your main stack is in Fez. Once you can, just white piece Granada, since we are going to be declaring on them soon hopefully it doesn't always happen but we will try just white piece them you want as short as truce as possible now after you siege down basically this portion of morocco it's time to end the war you don't want to let it drag out for too long since they have another level three fort here and two more forts right here and we're gonna take these four provinces from morocco in addition to war reps and as much money as we can which is going to be around 40 ducats in my case now we have taken all of these provinces right here and you can delete the fort in Tangier you don't need it you have the one in Ceuta and you're gonna get the one in Fez later we have also unlocked the conquer Tangier mission which gives us 150 admin points five prestige and claims on garb and the southern Morocco areas which we're gonna take and now that we have more admin points, we're gonna take admin tech 4. As you can see, I've already taken diplo tech 4. And we're gonna core these provinces, but not before we let war exhaustion come down, because they're gonna become cheaper. Now we do have more claims on Morocco, but we have a truce with them, so we're gonna start building a spy network on Granada. We're gonna keep currying more favors with Castile, and we're gonna ally whoever Castile is allied to unless it's England, so they're allied to us and to Aragon. Let's see if we can ally Aragon. We can't, but once we royal marry them, we will be able to, not before this war ends in my case. So ally whoever Castile is allied to, usually it's Aragon or France, if you can. And we're gonna send three of our light ships and add our explorer to them. And with the rest of our light ships, we are gonna protect trade in Seville while we bring the rest of the fleet home. And you can also delete your free company since we want to save some money right now. And now it's just basically waiting for admin tech 5 and our spy network on Granada to finish. In my case, Aragon, who is allied to Castile, just finished their war against Naples. And like I said, we're gonna ally whoever Castile allied. So I'm gonna ally Aragon. And I'm also gonna start building a spy network on Tlemcen in addition to building a spy network on Granada and currying favors with Castile with my diplomats. Once you do have 20% spy network on Granada, we're gonna claim their capital of Granada. And once that diplomat comes back, we're gonna curry favors with Aragon. Once we do have 20% spy network on Tlemcen, we're just gonna claim the nearest province. And once you have 10 more favors with Castile, you can ask them for ducats or soldiers. In my case, I need both, but I'm gonna ask for ducats because I need to pay off some loans, as we can see right here. Now we're just waiting for our manpower to replenish and for us to get admin tech 5 basically. Once your manpower has replenished, it's time to declare on the weaker of Granada or Tlemcen. In my case, Granada is getting decimated by Aragon and Castile, so I'm gonna be declaring on Tlemcen. Tlemcen is usually weak and they don't have any allies. In your case, if they've allied someone strong like the Ottomans, which does happen but very rarely, you're gonna have to set your sights somewhere else. Like I said, it's between Granada and Tlemcen. In my case, it's Tlemcen, so I'm gonna declare on them in the conquest of the province that I've claimed. Around this time you should also be unlocking your second government reform and I recommend taking strengthened noble privileges for that 15% national manpower. Once you have 100% at Tlemcen, or maybe in your case it's Granada, if it's Granada you can full annex them or vassalize them. If your game is going like mine is and it's Tlemcen, we're gonna take these 5 provinces from them right here, so their capital, the 3 coastal provinces and this one right here, and we're gonna take all their money as well, and that's gonna be the peace deal. Now we're not gonna core these provinces, in fact what we are gonna do is, we're gonna release Algier. And they're gonna pop out right here. That is their core. They have cores on these three provinces. And we're also gonna be granting them the three provinces that we took from Tlemcen. And we're gonna be setting them to a siege focus. 
So what I forgot to do right there is concentrate development on these provinces before giving them to Algier. So make sure you concentrate development from Algier before giving these provinces to them. By this time you may have enough ducats to start building your first buildings and of course I recommend building marketplaces in the provinces of Lisbon, Porto and Tangier. I'm gonna build one in Lisbon first because that's where I'm gonna get the most benefits from. And once you're at this point, see I have 615 diplomatic points, do not take Diplotech 5. We're gonna need to save up these points because we're gonna be unlocking our first idea group pretty soon. Now in my case, I did just fight Tlemcen and like I said, you should have fought who is weaker out of Granada or Tlemcen, but Castile and Aragon didn't full annex Granada. So I am going to take advantage of that and declare a war against Granada, they're only allied to Tunis who is pretty weak. In your case, you may not be able to do this or you may already own Granada. But either way, I am going to be declaring war on Granada since I do have a claim on them. It's no big deal if you only fight one of these two nations in your game. Either way, it's fine. I did also just embrace the Renaissance while I'm in this war with Granada. And of course, I am going to be taking Admin Tech 5. Now, the first idea group you want to take is, of course, Exploration Ideas. And by now you should have enough points to unlock the first and maybe second idea from this idea group. In my case, I can unlock the first two. And of course, I can hire colonists. At this point, we should also fulfill the mission beyond Cape Bordor, which gives us 10 prestige and 20% sell chance for the next 15 years, which we are going to take. And we can also choose our native policy. We are going to take the native trading policy right here. Now this does give us a chance for native uprisings, but once we take expansion ideas for our second idea group, we can take the policy which gives us minus 50% native uprising chance. Together with this trading policy, it goes down to minus 100. And at this point, the first province you should colonize is Cabo Verde, which is the furthest province that we can colonize to. So we are going to send a colonist there. We can't send one here because obviously we don't have colonial reign and we're gonna send them. So I just pieced out Granada's ally for some money, in my case it was Tunis and I am of course going to full annex Granada. You may have done this earlier while I was fighting Tlemcen or you may be doing it now after you've also fought Tlemcen. Or maybe you won't be doing it at all if Castile will annex them. Now when you do have enough money to select a naval doctrine, you may be tempted to go for the Portuguese Marines naval doctrine which gives you plus 1 impact blockade on siege, plus 10% marines force limit and minus 40% naval barrage cost. I actually don't recommend taking this naval doctrine because marines are kind of useless so I do recommend taking shipboarding, it's honestly up to you. I think shipboarding is the best one so that's the one I'm gonna take and I'm also gonna keep building marketplaces in the most valuable provinces. Now if your game is going something a little like mine, you should have been strong enough to rival England at this point, as you can see I've rivaled them. And this is enough to fulfill the mission English Alliance, which gives us claim on Galicia and Asturias, so basically on Castile. Now if you want to go this route, you can slowly start breaking your alliance with Castile and allying their rivals in order to declare on them, but in my case I'm just gonna remain friendly with Castile the entire game and hopefully I will get a PU on them somewhere down the line in 150 to 200 years since I don't want to concern myself too much with European matters. Now if and when you do get the province of Granada you will also have the Alhambra great project or monument whatever you want to call it. Now since this monument has been nerfed honestly it's not that big of a deal. Sure, all of these bonuses at level 3 would be nice to have, but upgrading does cost 1000, then 2500, then 7500. So if you do have the extra money, sure, you should be upgrading it, but it's not something you should specifically focus on. What you should focus on, and what our next war is going to be, however, is this province right here, the province of Demnate, which is in Morocco. This province has the Ait Benadou Great Project or Monument. Now at level 3, this monument gives us 25% local defensiveness in the area but its global modifiers are what we really need as portugal trade efficiency plus 10 percent global trade power plus five percent and caravan power plus 33 percent but we should definitely be focusing on this monument once you get enough splendor to unlock your first age ability of course as portugal you should get portuguese colonial growth which gives us global settler increase plus 50 percent and after that of course you should take higher developed colonies once your first colony in Cabo Verde does complete, you will unlock the mission Colonize West Africa. This is great, you get an explorer with 60 tradition and 60 diplomatic power. 
After this, it's time to pick the next province that we should colonize. And this is going to be the Gold Coast province right here. As you can see in the Ivory Coast trade node, and it's the right one out of these two that have centers of trade. So we're going to send our next colonist to the Gold Coast. I also do recommend adding the province of Cabo Verde to a trade company as well as all the provinces that you are going to colonize in the Ivory Coast trade node. And as we can see we have the Portuguese Guinea company. This is also around the time where you should be declaring your second war against Morocco or Tlemcen. In my case I'm going to be declaring against Morocco since my allies truces with them have run out and I do need to call them in and I am going to call in Castile for this war and you can just use any claim from your missions or from your subjects but the main goal in this war is going to be taking the province of Demnate so I'm just gonna declare for garb here so I just finished my second war with Morocco and as you can see I took these four coastal provinces which I did have a claim on as well as this province right here and of course the province of Demnate in order for us to get the Ait Benadou monument. Now we are going to be focusing on upgrading this one definitely more than Alhambra. You may not even have Alhambra in your playthrough and that's totally fine. This is also around the time that your colony in the Gold Coast should have finished after stacking all those settler increase modifiers, colonizing will go pretty fast. After taking some more provinces from Morocco you will unlock the mission expand the buffer zone which gives us some negative local unrest as well as local trade power in these provinces here and you should of course take it. And after this the next province we are going to colonize is the province of Luanda right here which is in the Congo region. This will of course allow us to unlock another mission which is settle in Africa which gives us some trade power. And we keep moving along Africa, Virginia and Indonesia. Also keep sending our explorers to explore and we're going to be focusing on Tlemcen next. After the war with Morocco and colonizing this province right here, it's time for me to declare my second war against Tlemcen. You might be doing the same or you might be declaring against Tunis or some of these smaller nations at this point. The main thing is we're expanding in North Africa still. And I'm going to be declaring a reconquest CB from my subject Algier. Now that I've 100% at Tlemcen, I'm going to be giving all the provinces to my subject Algier and taking all their money. For your third government reform, I recommend taking Council of the Indies. You could also take Exile Colonial Companies, but I think this one is better, especially since we're colonizing. Of course, you should also be establishing holy orders in all your states, and I recommend taking the local construction cost and local missionary strength one pretty much for all of them. And I do recommend stating all the provinces in the Safi trade note, actually because they are valuable trade provinces but there's also golden tafilal and some nice trade goods in other provinces so i do recommend stating all these provinces in safi whereas you will be adding all the ivory coast provinces to a trade company while i'm waiting around for my colonies to finish i'm also going to be declaring on tunis right now because that seems to be the best opportunity in your case you might be declaring on morocco again if you don't have a truce with them or you might be cleaning up these small nations right here if they still exist either way we're going to continue expanding in the Maghreb region and colonizing Africa right now. And I'm just going to be declaring a reconquest war from my vassal Algier. It's a good thing Morocco won't join, but either way, they would be easily beatable. Now, in your case, some of these nations like Morocco or Tunis might be allied to the Ottomans. In my case, Morocco did ally them after I took some provinces from them in the second war. So it's all about opportunities at this point. Now that I've 100% at Tunis, I'm gonna make them give Algiers core back and I'm also going to take their entire capital state. Now take as much as you can in these wars against the North African nations. No other nations should be joining coalitions against you, not the Mamluks or the Ottomans or any of these nations here. So it's honestly not gonna be a problem unless you go way too overboard. As you can see here, all of these nations that might join a coalition against me are pretty weak and insignificant right now. And I do have truces with all of them, which I am truce juggling anyway. Way. so the Mamluks and Ottomans aren't joining and even if they did they probably wouldn't declare so I'm gonna be taking all of this from Tunis you take as much as you can maybe Tunis are bigger in your game maybe they're even smaller than they are in mine take as much as you can this is also around the time where your colony in Luanda should finish as we can see it's finished I'm going to add it to a trade company and you should have fulfilled the mission the Cape of Good Hope by now as well which requires you to colonize West Africa which of course we did right here and right here it requires us to have discovered any 
provinces in the South Africa region, which of course we have, and it requires us to have light ships, at, be at least a quarter of our navy, and to be at 100 navy force limit, which we are. And this province will give us some good stuff and permanent claims on various areas and provinces in South Africa. So we are going to take that. It did give us claims on some provinces we can't see yet. And we have also unlocked the mission Settle in Central Africa after we colonize this, which will give us some trade power. And of course, <laughs> we just discovered this nation right here due to this mission. Anyway, we're going to continue colonizing with our colonists and sending them to the next furthest province, which in my case is this province right here, this lonely one. I can't reach the Cape yet because I don't have colonial range yet, but maybe you might be on Diplotech 7 and you might have the colonial range. Either way, you're going to colonize the next furthest province, in my case, is this one. So I'm just going to send a colonist over there. And we're also going to set our explorer to continue exploring. And we're just waiting for those colonies to finish and we're Gonna keep declaring on Maghrebi nations. So if your game is going a little something like mine, by now you may have three monuments already. So of course you start out with the Penna Palace in Lisbon, you might have the Alhambra in Granada, and you should definitely have Ait Benadu in Dimnate. The order in which you are going to focus on upgrading them is you're gonna want to upgrade this one first, and then you're gonna want to upgrade Alhambra, and then finally Penna Palace out of these three you might be getting even more monuments very soon. If you're like me and you forgot to enable grant new world charters to the burgers, you should definitely do it now. This is a reminder to enable it earlier than I am right now. Well, that's something you don't see every day, because Teal took a local noble. Once you unlock admin deck 7, you should of course take expansion ideas for your second idea group. Since my truce with Morocco has run out and they don't have any strong allies anymore, it's time to declare my third war against them, where I will focus on taking their coast and the gold producing province of Tafilalt. Around this time your colony in this province right here should also have finished and you should have explored this area by now. Which would of course allow you to unlock the Horn of Africa mission, which we are going to do. After that, we're going to send a colonist to the next furthest province, which is probably going to be this province right here, the island of Comoro. These provinces seem to still be too far away for us. So we're going to send our next colonist right here. Once you do 100% Morocco, we are of course going to take the gold producing province of Tafilal, as well as their coastal provinces and a fort, as well as all their money. Don't forget to concentrate development. Not in the gold province though. This is also around the time where you should be unlocking the push to India mission if you've been exploring and colonizing like I have. Maybe you're going to be a little bit ahead of me or maybe you're going to be a little bit behind. Either way, we are going to unlock the push to India mission which will give us an explorer and the Vasco da Gama in India event will happen. So after this point, my save file actually corrupted and I could barely load into the game. Everything is messed up, my government reforms have been abolished, a bunch of crazy stuff has happened, but I was gonna stop the guide here anyway soon. So what you are going to do after this point is, you are going to get the province of Goa from the event, from the mission. After that, you're gonna wanna keep colony hopping until you reach the East Indies, where you will focus on colonizing these provinces which produce the trade good cloves all over here. By that point you should have a solid foothold in Africa, in India from Goa as well as the East Indies where you will create armies, one for Europe, one for Africa and one for the East Indies and India and you will focus on conquering the nations there. From your idea groups you will get three colonists. With one of those colonists you should focus on colonizing the Ivory Coast and the Cape of Good Hope in Africa, going for the trade centers first and the most valuable provinces and you should be adding the Ivory Coast provinces to a trade company as well as the Cape of Good Hope and Zanzibar. You should also be adding all of these provinces here to a trade company and using your second colonist to colonize all of these provinces. Once you get your third colonist, that's when you will finally start colonizing the new world and this is basically the new colonial meta where you have to focus on getting over to the East Indies as soon as possible to get the new trade good cloves and route all the trade from over here all the way to Sevilla. When you do colonize the new world, you should focus on the Caribbean first and once you get five provinces, 
in a colonial region. In order to get a colony up and running, you should immediately move to a new colonial region. And here we can see the colonial regions map mode. So you're going to go from the Caribbean to Colombia, to Brazil, La Plata, Peru, and then into Mexico. You shouldn't really focus on North America and these regions here because the trade from over here doesn't route to Sevilla anyway. For your next idea groups, I recommend picking quality as your third idea group or quantity. And for your fourth idea group, you should take economic or trade ideas. After that, it's either one of those that you didn't pick. And for the last two, it's really up to you. Like I said, it's really unfortunate that my save file did corrupt, but I was gonna stop this guide very soon because at this point, your game will diverge too much from mine in order for me to make a relevant guide. So at this point, just keep focusing on the Maghrebi nations, colonize your way to Indonesia, use one colonist to colonize Africa, add the Ivory Coast, Cape of Good Hope, and Zanzibar to trade companies. You don't really need to go inland Africa except for the gold provinces, but you won't be needing them anyway. Use one colonist to colonize over over here and start conquering all of these nations they should be very weak use your province of goa which i didn't get because the event bugged out but you will get it to start conquering india and route all that trade there you can if you want to add these provinces to trade companies i think you should but it's fine if you don't and with your third colonist you will be colonizing the caribbean central america and south america i can't open the great powers tab right now for some reason but i am in the great powers and by this point you should be too and you should be making a bunch of money and focusing on upgrading the ait benadu monument as well as alhambra if you have the money and start conquering the rest of all the colonial and trade regions to route all that good good trade to Sevilla. Unfortunate that I had to end it this way because the save file corrupted but I still hope you enjoyed this guide and that you learned about the new colonial meta which is focusing on the East Indies first instead of the new world. Let me know in the comments below what's the next guide that I should make and if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Only 10% of you are subscribed so it really means a lot and I've also launched channel memberships so you can check out the join button down below and join the discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.